Hello and welcome back to the official sponsors of Dennis Shrabeni podcast. Uh, Jack Reeve, Chris Reeve. How are you, mate? Very good. Good to see you. You well? I mean, yeah. I've seen you all day, but still good to see you. Yeah, I mean, just just come away from a really good performance against the Europa League champions. Mm. So how can you be angry or disappointed with that? Uh, yeah, let's um, let's start with Dennis Shrabeni. <laughs> um, because it kind of all started on this podcast, didn't it? In it did. terms of so, let's talk people through the timeline of what happened. Okay. So last Friday night, Max, our cameraman and editor, he for some reason he gets a program early. Don't okay. know why. He must have good contacts. VIPs. He sees in the team sheet that Dennis Trebeni doesn't have a sponsor. One of the few players that doesn't. I think the other one was Ibrahim Amadou. Yeah. Um, so we were like, okay, okay, this could be possible. You were texting me like, can we do it? Can we do it? I'm like, it's going to be a lot of money, Chris. It's going to be a lot of money. And I don't know if we've got it. Anyway, we asked the people, mainly on here. Yeah. And the people spoke. Yeah. They wanted us to sponsor Shrebeni, our Lord, our Saviour. Pause. I just think this epitomises the fact that it just shows we genuinely read all of your comments mm. on the YouTube videos, your iTunes reviews, your tweets, your Facebook posts, your Instagram comments, because... We, 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 we could not ignore the fact that you guys desperately wanted to, to see Talk Nora City sponsor Dennis for Benny. So we had to do it. 100%. Anyway, sorry. And, and I think that's a really good point, actually. If um, you did want us to sponsor Shrebeni and you haven't yet left us a five star review on iTunes, do it now <laughs> and repay the, repay the favours. Um, anyway, Ben Tunnel tweets us from yeah. the club who's head of commercial and he says, lads, we can make this happen if you want it, if you want to make it happen. So we're like, oh my God, this is actually going to happen now. Then, Gasway, the legends that are Gasway, one of our primary partners here on Talkner City, reach out and say, look lads, we know how much Dennis Shrebeni means to the fans, we want to make this happen for you, we'll stump up the cash, and, uh, and you can have the sponsorship, because we know how much the Paddy Power City Styling. fans um, want Shrebeni sponsored. So, thanks to Gasway, yeah. thanks to the football club, and, um, and we've, we've made it happen. I can't, I'm actually in shock. I literally cannot believe we've done it. Mm. I mean, if you were to think, Jack, all of those years ago, when you first started this channel in your bedroom, mm. and then fast forward a few years, and you're sponsoring a Premier League football player. And got on the pitch today. And he came on the pitch today. Did our logo go on the big screen, by the way? It did at the start of the game. So the things we get as part of the sponsorship is we get... The Talk Nora City um, it logo, go, it goes on the screen, doesn't it, before the yeah. match? And the programme. It goes in the programme. And the website. And the website. And then what else do we get? A meal with the player. <laughs> a meal with Dennis. That's Which, by the so way, good. I think it's going to be awkward. <laughs> oh, 100%, but it's going to be so good. Are we going to wear the icon caps? We've I don't know if it's part the of the dress caps. code. So I, so I text Ben, actually, um, the other you, night. I thought you just said den. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I text Ben and said, what's the dress code? Right. And he was like, it's formal. And I was like, is an icon cap formal? And he was like, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, possibility. And then a signed frame shirt. Something like that. Which means, goodbye, Lee Crofts. Hello, Dennis Shrebeni. Shrebeni is going to be there. Anyway, um, so that's really good. Thanks to everyone for the support. It's a bit of fun. Um, yeah. Good to give the money to, to, to the club, I guess. <laughs> good to give the money to the club. Is, is it? Uh, yes. The establishment. Yes. Um, so Still not forgiving you for their memberships, though. Um, and, yeah, so that was really fun. Anyway, Dennis anyway, today, uh, We lost. We did. That's annoying, right? Uh, yeah, it is, a, it is a wee bit annoying, but I've been annoyed. I mean, I, I've come away from games before as a Norwich fan and been livid for days. Right. Two, three days. I cannot put it to bed. I'm, I'm, I'm fuming. Mm. I leave the car road today and literally the, the, the moment that I'd walked out, I was over it. Honestly, I was over it. And I, I think when we came to the Premier League, what do we sit here and say to Stuart's face? We said, Stuart, we just want to make sure that our team are playing with pride and they make us feel proud of the fact that we support them. Yeah. Did you feel that today? Oh, 100%. Of course you did. The, 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 the way that we attacked the game, the way that we sucked up the Chelsea pressure and somehow yeah. managed to do something despite getting that. I mean, it was difficult. Um, ultimately today we've gone toe to toe with the Europa League champions. And if I'd said to you, Jack, at the start of this season, Jack, we're only gonna lose 3-2 to Chelsea mm -hmm. next season. You'd go, 
Yes, please. Yeah. What a great entertaining game. And again, we've put ourselves on the map. And I know that's not so important now because we're more or less there in terms of, I think the pundits are realising yeah. that. Not that we give a shit about the pun, what the pundits say now. and But it's nice to know that people are now respecting yeah. our city. We won't, I think for me, Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, Manchester United, Liverpool. Did I say Arsenal already? Yeah. Man City. Man City. Yeah. Those clubs, when they come to Car Road, I ain't expecting anything. I'm genuinely Guarantee not. we'll beat one of them at home, though. Well, there you go, then. We always we beat one. Yeah, and yeah. I think when a club like one of those comes to town, you just have to be like, you know what, let's just see what we can do. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they'll be in the Champions League there or thereabouts at the end of the season. And for Norwich City Football Club, we've spent nothing mm. on anyone, yeah. practically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another exceptional performance. Yeah. Todd Cantwell. Yeah. Unbelievable. Give, give, give me some words on Todd Cantwell. It's fascinating with Todd, isn't it? Because he sat here la- in the middle of us last season after a good championship season, but he didn't set the world alight. He was yep. good, but he only, I think he scored once, got a couple of assists. We knew that there was a player in there. Yeah. And for him to even get into the championship side last year, I think was a massive achievement. He'd gone from the academy where he'd excelled throughout, but he was always quite small. And you just wondered, can he make the step up? Mm. And I think to a certain extent he did last season, but there were also critics of him. And I think they were justified at times. Never criticise your young players, but I think a lot of it was productive criticism. Um, And I think he deserved it at times. This season, however, for me, granted, let's take Pookie aside for a moment. Yeah. He's been our best player. Totally agreed. And by a long way. Totally agreed. The thing that I'm most impressed with Todd is this season is, is one, the fact he's He's, he's at the moment he's irreplaceable in that Norwich side which yeah. is bonkers to yeah. think yeah. because when he was named in the team at Liverpool I don't think anyone was surprised but they were probably like no you know what I, it? I think it's fair to say they were surprised yeah fair okay inexperienced against one of the best teams in the world yeah but what I'm seeing from Todd Cantwell this season I'm certainly not comparing the two but he's very similar to the way James Madison plays in a okay. sense of he's very very good at protecting the ball now I yes. don't think he was as good as that last season. If, yes. he, if he can't get a pass, he'll draw a foul, which yeah. is really, really good. You'll probably know more than me, but he looks a lot... like It's hard yeah. to get him off yeah. the ball. Yeah, he's put some like, work in. He's obviously been in the gym, and you were, you were saying to me, like he's been at the training ground nearly every day. He was training when he was on holiday with his mm. missus in Dubai. Like He's clearly taking this incredibly seriously. And he's just buzzing all over the mm. pitch. He was, he was essentially, at times, I was slightly... Um, bewildered as to why it was happening but he was playing basically right back for times today Max yep. was tucking in um, Jamal on the other side was tucking in leaving leaving Emmy out, out wide so he had to put a lot of work in today it was bloody hot and yeah. he didn't stop running and he got a goal as well yeah. a very well taken goal yeah. and great movement to get in behind the Chelsea defence so I watched that performance mm. as I did it when he played Newcastle and as I did when he played against Liverpool and I just thought that is the complete performance. Totally agree, Jack. I think with Todd Campbell, it's the flicks, it's the tricks, it's protecting the ball, yeah. it's his vision. Mm. I think it, I think he's learning a lot from Mo in terms of his calmness on the ball as well. I think he's picked up little bits and bobs. You know, you could look at James Madison. I would look at actually Wes Houlihan, who he's probably idolised growing up. Yeah. And today, he had that same effect on the ball. I think that, as you say, he's able to protect it now. He's so creative. And that is bloody exciting to see. And how weird is it to, to, to think now, with all the love and respect in the world to Todd, at the start of the season, you'd be like, I think Todd will be a fringe player. Yeah. He'll be in and out. Yeah, yeah. But at the moment, you cannot take Todd Catman out of the team, which is presenting <laughs> Daniel Farker with all sorts yeah. of positive problems to have. Um, because he's got he, a player in Patrick Roberts on the bench who's thinking, well... Yeah, like, I mean, I'm very, unlu- like, yeah, very unlucky for Patrick Roberts not, not to be included in the squad today. I think it was because Tim, they wanted to involve Tim, Timmy Kay. Which makes sense. Um, was he not even on the bench? No, he was wasn't he on the bench. Um, I think you know when you've got uh, when you've got Tim close there. Oh, it's just, it's, oh, I'm so excited to see Todd Cantwell against West Ham. <laughs> and 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 let's think, let's hang on. I'm gonna I'm all over the shop at the moment. I'm just brimming with excitement no, like for our, for our like squad. Um, play like we did today against Chelsea, against a Burnley, a West Ham, an Everton. A, There's a, a Brighton, Southampton, I mean, Villa. Exactly. Sheffield Play like United. that against those teams, home and away, and we'll tonk them. We'll tonk them. Because the, uh, today, uh, you know, and I'll say, I will say, although I hate saying it, 
I thought Mason Mount was exceptional for Chelsea I thought him today. and Tammy Abraham were really good, actually. Tammy Abraham went up another level, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Um, I really didn't want to compliment Mason Mount, but I thought Mason Mount played very well. I thought Chelsea pressed us exceptionally yeah. well. I thought Chelsea executed the game plan yeah. almost to perfection in the sense of they knew that Nor this Norwich City side will grow into a first half, yes. will grow into a second half. Um, and, and today they attacked, they got their goal, they were super clinical, they took all of yeah. their goals really, really well. So fair play to Chelsea. And again, I actually take more positives from that as a Norwich City fan because I don't see teams taking the chances that, che that Chelsea took today. I mm, don't, no, no. I really don't. I, I saw a great stat earlier, I think since October 2018, only two managers have won at Carrow Road. Frank Lampard and Daniel Farker. Because of uh, because So of Frank Derby, yeah. beat us last season and have, has done today. I thought their performance, I'm really glad you mentioned their game plan. We know we're a second half side. A lot yeah. of our points are won in, late on in the game. Yeah. And I thought Chelsea just, that first 20 minutes of the second half was what won them the game. I thought first half it was, it was all Agreed. over the shop, wasn't Agreed. it? There was goals galore, it was all going mm. on. We got none of the ball in the, in the tw first 20 minutes of that second yeah. half. It was persistent you know just backs constant, against the wall wasn't it backs it was the wall. yeah and that really wore us out yeah and what really frustrated me today it's not a massive thing we just didn't play our game like second half we could we couldn't keep the ball we were pumping it long we were asking Pookie to chase and onto never you know passes that were never going to get to him and, mm. and, and that's where my frustration lied but I think it was as much as Chelsea being good yes as us maybe not being so great but I mean I I, I I'm going to say it, I, I think that, you know, I, I'm so pleased that Daniel Daniel Farker chucked on the, the three subs at once. Yeah. Love that. Bit Although, late. I'm still thinking, for me, Marco had to come off sooner. Yeah. He had to come off sooner. And I think, you know, keeping him off, I mean, for, for Chelsea's third goal, because of the fact that we had gone too yeah. far forwards, he was struggling to get back. You need a Marco in there that's able to chop out players to 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 take a booking in a way at that that stage in the game. I don't blame Marco for being that high, that high up the pitch, but for me, I think it said that he kind of gambled in a sense. Yeah. He wasn't thinking about the, the the bigger picture of the game. It's tough though for Norwich, isn't it? Because we were criticising just then that we were sat too far deep. And then the one kind of noticeable attack we had in the yes. second half was what eventually led to and, their goal. And, and, so and it's Chelsea a really were tough balance And Chelsea were brilliant going forwards, they really were. Um, but for me, I would have taken off Marco earlier. I would have brought on Mario Vrancic in, in, in his replacement because he brings a calmness to the ball. And I think that we desperately needed that. Um, and, and I thought actually today, Kenny, Kenny McLean came on and I was really disappointed in Kenny yeah. today. I really was, I have yeah. to be super honest. Tough to get into a um, game like that, but if, you, if you're looking for impact, he was poor. 100% by yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. great shout. So fair play to Kenny in a sense. And that's, that, that also plays into your argument that if you want a player to come on and grow, yes. like chucking Trebeni on, granted, it's unlikely he's gonna score. What, are you joking no, me? No, he's gonna score. It makes it really tough for a striker to get into a game when you've got eight minutes left on the clock. 100%. But, you know, credit to Daniel Farker. He chucked on three at once, and that's why I'm not going to criticise him too heavily. I actually think that the subs that he brought on today didn't perform mm. to the best of their ability, actually. I, I thought they could have been... There were, there were real moments of sloppiness yeah. and, and actually not the substitution. Um, very rare that you'll catch me saying this, but Emmy Buendia today was yeah. sloppy. Yeah. I, did, so I, thought, I thought your criticism of Moritz was was actually pretty unfair. Really? I yeah. Thought, I he thought, lost possession in. Yeah. Like, I thought, you know, Emily, you know Emily what it was though? though. You know what it was, though, Chris. Is, is Moritz was instrumental in everything we had done last week. Yes. And I don't think it was necessarily Moritz having a bad game. Chelsea had obviously looked at that performance and gone, "He's the man. He's the man. We need to stay sure. on top of. Sure. If, if we want to nullify Norwich going forwards, mm. he's the man we need to get in early." And every time you saw two Chelsea players banging, yeah. banging, and Moritz just didn't have the time to, mm. to. So I think we would have learnt a lot from today. Yeah. I think Moritz will learn a lot. I agree with you. I think Emmy yeah. didn't have his best game. I think he'll learn a lot from that. I, I, and I'm still not a fan of Emmy and Todd dropping so far so far back when Chelsea were on the attack. As I said earlier, Emmy was essentially a left back mm. and Todd was a right back at times. But Todd made some And then it makes it so tough to get forward. Mate, Todd made some fantastic yeah, challenges channel. today. And speaking of challenges today, Ben Godfrey. Oh my God, pardon the pun, but wow. Yeah. Like, wow, honestly. And, and you know what I was so happy with today? 
almost a bit disappointed with the subs. But the player that had the best second half, that injected the most energy yeah. and passion, was Ben Blooming Godfrey. That run in the second. That half. run in the second half, where he picks on the ball, up to the ball, and he just yeah, drives yeah, past yeah, everyone. Yeah. He's not letting anyone through. He's just bombing on forwards, and he's saying, "No, boys, let's give this some." Yeah. And and for me, that was bloody delightful to see. I'm so impressed with Ben. Definitely. Ben Godfrey today looked like a 35, 40 million pound defender. Yeah, easily. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think that. I think. <laughs> I, I was it's thinking, Hanley's positioning. Yeah, let it? me pick up here because I thought Ben was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. But he was also having to mop up for Hanley's mistakes. Which times. isn't Ben's problem. Which which isn't Ben's problem, which means he had more to do. Yes. Um, which makes his performance even better. It does. No, it definitely does. And I think as well as Hanley's maybe defensive mishaps, and this isn't the first time this has happened today. We saw it against Liverpool as well. And we also saw it against Newcastle. Um, he, he's not as good with the ball on the floor as Christoph Zimmerman is. Correct. And that really costs you when you're up against it. I've already touched on the point. But when you're properly up against it against a very good side, yeah. you need to try and keep the ball yeah. and just just reset. Yes. And when you get the ball back and then you just lump it forwards to yes. try and into a channel for Timu, it then just comes straight back at you. And that's what cost us today. And you know what? It's not personal. This no, criticism of Hanley isn't personal because he's a good the defender ma- yeah he is but the matter of fact Jack is how many games has he played in the last year yeah exactly not enough well, he's so, fourth, it was a fourth throw set back in the championship yeah I know but it, yeah but taking away that we no, are no, in the I, position I, that we're in and all all I'm making very clear to our listeners and, and viewers is yes we're criticising Hanley but it's not personal it's purely based on the fact that he's not played enough football which is why he's not as sharp as Christoph and Timmy Kay which is why by the way Tim Close and Christoph Zimmerman might not necessarily be the instant answer no. to our def- to our defensive mistakes so far no. because they're going to take a couple yeah. of games to get up to speed. Yeah. Which is which is exactly why the likes of Max, Jamal, and Ben playing to the to the ability that they're at is absolutely fantastic to see. T- Tom Tribal, decent game today. Yeah, I was slightly tough I, game. Yeah, today. really tough game. Like, look, this is this is we're we're up against the Europa League champions mm. and and nearly got a draw out of it. Yes. Yes. Uh, but I, I don't think I think the midfield was open today as I said I don't think Moritz had his best game but he had a very high standard last week yeah. Tom was you know buzzing about I, I must admit I didn't really notice him that much yeah um, I thought the standouts for me were once again Todd Cantwell was unbelievable yeah. Ben Godfrey was unbelievable and we haven't even said his name yet but Timu Puki <laughs> has been involved in every single Norwich goal five so far five goals five so goals far. and an assist the stat, Premier League top goal scorer. And the stat is, he is the first Norwich player since, sorry, the second Norwich player since World War Two to score in the first three games of a Premier League wow. season. The other player was, guess. Steve Morrison. Wrong. Craig Bellamy. Was it really? Yes. Really? First player to score in the first three games of a Premier League season for Norwich City since World War Two. What a stat. Timu Puki, by the way, what a player. I'm not going to stop saying it. The guy oozes... Just he's just got this coolness, and the Chelsea defenders today, shit scared, mm. petrified. But this is the thing, like Puki. Granted, his goal today was a goal <clears throat> kick error, but if he keeps getting shots on target, he is going to score goals. Hey, uh-huh. hey, his assist for Todd. Yeah, the really play nice. with Todd there. I actually thought his play with Todd, it, the, the assist for Todd was better than his goal, a hundred percent. And that's what you get from Team Puki. Yeah. Going back to Todd Cantwell, I've just got to say this: his prowess. He is just brimming with confidence. And Norwich City fans, take note. This is a player that some of you guys last season criticised and look what it did for his confidence. And now we back him, we sing his name and look what it's doing Mm, for him. And his hair is on point, by the way. His hair is on point. He's gone through a tough couple of months with that hair. We know his hair has gone through a tough couple of months. And now it's delivering. It shows that patience with the barnet works. And a bit of blonde hair dye in there as well. Back to Timu, though. Yeah. I saw a stat earlier. The last time we were in the Premier League... Our top scorer was Di Mercio Makani with seven goals. Timmy Puki has got five and three. Wow. And you just look and think, if we can keep him fit for the whole season, there's 20 goals in him. I'm absolutely positive. And don't forget, we've got Josip to come in. We've got Big Who's injured now, We've of got course, Big Jojo but... and we've got Big D. Big, big Jojo. So the serious point here is, yeah. if we keep Puki fit, yeah, we'll I'm be fine. absolutely sure that his goals will be enough to keep us up this yeah, season. Yeah, 100%. Because I was going into today, this morning, and my mindset is... Pookie will score against Chelsea. And then yeah. I'm thinking, actually, what, what am I thinking here? Because 
I'm so confident. Let's reflect on that. Against the European or the UEFA Cup yes. champions. And yes. I'm like, what is going on in my yes. head? But I'm so sure of it. It's, it's, it's weird, Jay. And, and this is exactly why I said to you today, I think it was on... Uh, when, when, would you score, when did we score the second goal today? God knows, like 30 minutes maybe. Anyway, halfway through the second half, I said to Jack, I tapped Jack and showed us, Jack, seriously, press pause a minute. Let's just yeah, take yeah. this in. And Norwich City fans, I encourage you to do the same listening and watching now. Take this in. Norwich City Football Club, who have spent jack shit on transfers, have almost beaten the Europa League champions. That is madness. And it's that perspective mm. and gratitude mm. and, and passion that will see Norwich City over the line. It was this really season. funny when, I, when we came out, and it's a really kind of humble check where we were speaking to Ollie. And uh, he sits just above the dugout. Yeah. And he was like, I had £200 million pounds worth of players in front of me. How mad is that? Our bench is what? I don't know, a few million? No, couple, probably a couple of quid. Close as fee takes that up as a time. But it shows you, right? Yes. That Chelsea had £200 million pounds worth of talent on the bench. Yes. Yes. Unbelievable. So, all right then. Three games in now. Yeah. One win, two losses. Yeah. We've played against the Champions League winners and the Europa League winners. Next up at Car Road, the Premier League winners. It doesn't get any easier. But what's your... West Ham away though, mate, first. Yeah, yeah, of course. First three games. Yeah. How are you feeling after them? Because, you know, we're... Dead relaxed, confident, proud, buzzing. Um, my chest puffed out. I, I, I genuinely believe that this set of Norwich City players should be looking at breaking into the top half of the table, not sitting down in the relegation zone. 100%. I'm so pleased we've played Liverpool when we've played them. I've played them. I'm so, I'm so pleased that we've played Chelsea when we've played them. And by the way, we're playing Man City early doors as well. Brilliant. Get it done and out of the way. Let's just do ourselves proud. We've got a point to prove at the minute. Let's, learn, let's do our learning now. Yeah. I remember last time in the Prem, Jack, we said... You know, it, it's got a click into place, but at Christmas time, you know, what is going on? We're not making ground, we're not doing enough, we're not make, making stopping mistakes, but now we're doing our learning early mm. doors. And that's super important because come Christmas, we'll know where we need to improve, we'll know our weaknesses, we'll know how to defend against them. And importantly, the good teams at Carrow Road will be done. Yeah. Well, they'll be done, won't yeah. they? But the thing is though, right, even with Chelsea coming to town today, yeah. I still felt confident. Absolutely. So, gr granted, Manchester City are in a completely different league, so I think yeah. they will beat us. Yeah. But Arsenal, Tottenham, yeah. United, bring it on. Absolutely. Bring it 100%. on. 100%. Because we created chances against Chelsea today, and yeah. I didn't think it was our best performance. Agreed. We hit the crossbar. It could have quite easily been True. Ben Godfrey again, by the way. Forgot about yeah. that. Um, so why not? Also, I think he deserves a mention because I've criticised him enough over the past couple of seasons. Tim Krull oh, was really, really good today and was brilliant. against Newcastle as well. That save at 2-1 yes. kept us in the game for the next 70 minutes. Absolutely. It was phenomenal. Absolutely. That goal goes in, game over yeah. in my opinion, honestly. Yeah, well, I don't is. think against a team like Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, Manchester United, and if Norwich City, if that goes in against Norwich against one of those sides, it's over. Yeah. And for, for Timmy K to pull off that, that show-stopping save mm. at that point of the game was exceptional. And do you know what I love today? Which I'm not sure if you noticed. God, tell me. Tim Krull, and I didn't love this, obviously, but Tim Krull punts it out for a throw-in. He makes a bit of a cock-up, right? Yeah. And the first thing the Barkley do is, do me, do yeah. me, Krull. And we're straight, but we're behind him. Yeah. And, I, and that must, as a Norwich player, give you so much mm. confidence. And this is kind of an outcry to Norwich fans that... I think we've done an exceptional job so far. Norwich, we have. Norwich fans. Yeah, yeah. Norwich fans have done a brilliant job. Let's pat ourselves on the back. Well done. Yeah, well done. Seriously. Well done, mate. Seriously. You know, for, for that sort of... That to be happening is a massive step forwards in this football mm. club's history. There were so many flags today as well. Love that. I, I think the flags are like... Yeah. Big up a long come Norwich for that. Yeah. Uh, should we get on some questions? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Right, my favourite time of the week, other than seeing you for a beer pre-match. Mine, mine is seeing Dennis Shrebeni mm. enter the field of play. Definitely. Maybe we should get a sponsor for our Twitter question segment. Ooh. And, and for that, you can have How can we uh, a, a that, Domino's takeout with us. Mate, I'm not sure. A pint of beer in Redwell. I can't commercialise that, I'm sorry. Are you sure? <laughs> Will, the Willemots question time. Ooh. Willemots, if you watch, we haven't heard from you for a while. Actually, everyone, tweet Willemot and say, where are your questions, big man? Yeah, I agree. 
Go. I missed that. Uh, Richard Hancock. Uh, Todd Campbell. Big up, Richard. Yeah, Love Richard, Richard. mate. Um, Todd Campbell was superb today, I thought. Only change I'd make is bring Close or Zimbo in if they're fit. Yep, agreed. More of a statement than a question, but we still respect you, Richard. Um, Gus Gerald, man of the match, Godfrey. Yeah. Improve uh, Hanley for Closer. Or Zimbo if fit. Yeah. Shift Cantwell to Steepy's position Ooh. and Roberts in. Now, this is really interesting. Ooh. We tweeted out, if you don't follow us already, we're at Talk Norwich City on Twitter. The best Norwich City content uh, out there. Hello. I've said it. It's not proven, but yeah, fine. let us know what you think. We put our teams out and the only difference was you had Sheep in, yeah. which was the team. Yeah. I had Roberts in. Yeah. Most people going with you saying um, Sheep is the correct answer. However... I'm seeing a turn in people. A lot of people want Roberts in. After today's game, is Steedman dropped for you? No. He stays in. Yeah. You, I were, you were slagging him off on the way back to the car earlier. Yes, but it's not It's not that he performs poorly. It's that Daniel doesn't pull him off when he's done. Right. That's the issue here. And I don't... The reason why I'd keep Marco in for the next game is because I don't think Patrick Roberts can come from literally sitting out today to yeah. all of a sudden starting a Premier League game away from home at West Ham. I don't think... But he had a, it's the same pre-season as everyone else. Absolutely. I just think, Jack, you can't just chuck players in like that. And I don't think Daniel Farker will do that either. And I still think it's harsh on Steepy. I thought I thought Steeperman did, did as much as he could do considering how good Chelsea were in the first half okay. today. Um, and I do still think it's harsh on Steepman. I know I'm completely contradicting myself now, but it's. I still just think with Marco, he's got a solid 60 minutes in his tank. Pull him off. Bring on someone that's either going to calm the game down or some creative flair that's going to be going to push us on to, yeah. go, to go and get an equaliser or, or win the game. And it's, it's tough. against Marco. Yeah, no, no, definitely. It's nothing against him. I really love. I really like Marco. He definitely adds something that that physical threat going forwards. Because if you, if you were to bring Patrick Roberts in. You've then got Patrick uh, Roberts, Emmy Buendia, and Todd yeah. Cantwell. That's quite a, mm-hmm. a lightweight, although tenacious, quite a lightweight three in behind. I, I, and I, I do think Marco adds something to the mm, team. I, the thing for me yeah. is it's just so frustrating having Roberts on the bench because I know he's such a good yeah. player. I, no, I agree. What I, what I love the look, of, the look of is Todd Cantwell sitting behind Timu. Right. That really gets me going. So surely Roberts comes in then if you want that. I know, but I just, I just don't think. I, I honestly, this isn't my opinion. I don't think Daniel Farke will think Patrick Roberts is ready to be chucked in right. in that game. Maltese Canary. Now this is bold from Maltese Canary. Jeez, he says hello. Hanley never to play again. It's the second coming of that donkey Russell Martin. Oh no! Bring Tim Close back. Oh, International no pedigree will lead that line. Other than that, stick with what we have. Now I think that's incredibly harsh. Hanley will play again, probably at Crawley on Tuesday night. Um, harsh on Russ, club legend, um, and harsh. one of the few people to appear on the TNC podcast twice. Disgusting on Russ Martin. Yeah. Why has Russ Martin been brought into that? There's yeah. been so many shocking defenders in Norwich City Football Club's mm. history, yet you've chosen a Norwich City legend to yeah. slag off. Completely disagree. Yeah, harsh. Um, Hanley... But, like, I, but I understand... I understand that, the sentiment. I understand the fact that... And this is why I always have this rule, right? I set this, this is a rule for myself. After the Norwich game, yeah. I don't tweet yeah. until half an hour. Yeah. Just chill. Yeah, yeah. Gather your thoughts. Have a Woodfords. Have a think. Chat to your Bezzy pal. Chat to your mum, your dad, your granddad, whoever you sit with. Mm. And just work out where it's at. That, that stinks of... I'm two pints deep and I've lost my head. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and I'm fine with that, obviously. <laughs> but anyway, um, I get the point. I, does, I Hanley, get... does Hanley start against West Ham? That's the question. No. Okay. So, although the Maltese Canary has maybe had a couple of, couple of Woodfords and lost his head a bit. And by the way, we endorse a couple of Woodfords. Oh, 100%. Three or four if you're not driving. Especially if it's a conquest. Oh, I had a, what did I have today? I had a Woodford's Wherry pre-match. Oh. Oh, God, it went down an absolute treat, Chris. Crisp, cold Woodford's Wherry. Oh, my goodness, it went down. So it, it moistened the, 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 the vocal box, ready for What a... else can you have on a match day apart from a mm. pint of Wherry? God, it's good. It's just a shame it's out of a plastic cup. Mm. Um, but, of course, we don't want glass near drunk football fans. Help the environment. Plastic doesn't. Oh, I yeah. No. That's my point. Oh, exactly. Save the bloody turtles... 
and give me a glass when Woodford's wary. <laughs> No, okay. save the turtles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Plastic's killing our environment. It's giving us days like this, where it's, uh, what is it, Lovely. 57 degrees. Yeah. I'm serious, no, loved it. Yeah, I, I think I feel I've got a tan today. Actually, more plastic. We want no, more. No, 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 no. Jack. God. No, we want less of it. Um, Remember, we don't cut anything out of the podcast, Jack. Don't slag off no, environmentalists. Of no, no, no. It's no, very important f- to save the planet. Yeah, get your, your, your metal straws. I have recently purchased a um, a recyc- uh, not recyclable, one, one of those reusable coffee cups. Oh, yes, that stinks of you. Yeah, yo, so, I, so yeah. I walk into Costa and I say, yo, no, whoa, guys. You say whoa, yo. <laughs> whoa, yo and whoa. Yo, whoa, guys. <laughs> Here's my reusable. Nice. 10p off. Happy days. You get 10p off as well? Yeah, cool. The only issue with the reusable coffee cups is you've got to carry it around all day. Yeah. And that poses issues. But for me, I'd rather, you know, it's marginal gains. It's a Stuart yeah. Webber world we're yeah. living in. <laughs> if only, Chris. If only. Um, I've just realised why everyone's just sending us statements. Go on. Because you've put, how do we improve the side against West Ham? What's wrong with that? Well, it just... It means we get statements. Well, I'm sorry, mate, but that's what I've done. Right. So let's deal with it. You know what? I know you're head of commercial here at TNC, but I've just given away a free sponsorship to Bristol Rovers Polls. This is now the Bristol Rovers Polls Q&A section of the podcast. (laughs) Bristol Rovers Polls, good to have you back, mate. Uh, Good to have you back. Should we say how they're getting on? What have you just done? We've just given the the question and answer section. Is now sponsored by Bristol Rovers Polls. Okay. Can we terminate the contract at any time? Yes. Good. Uh, we, we may terminate it at the end of this podcast. Okay. Let's see how they've got on today. Bristol Rovers. Jack, who cares? I Next care. question. No one cares. If anyone... Oh. Po- 3-1 win against Oxford. <laughs> who cares? Go on the Bristol Rovers. Jeez. Jack. Back. Hang on. This is a North City podcast. No No one cares about Bristol Rovers. Mate, our main contributor cares. The customer is always right. Would you say you are more confident about staying up now or were you more confident at the start of the season? Both. No, 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 you can't be both. I don't know, just said it. So I was really confident at the start of the season. I was really confident after the Liverpool performance. I was really confident after we just completely, completely looked after Newcastle and I'm confident now after the European mm. Champions so I'm I'm confident so yeah I'm, I'm confident too thanks for the question though Bristol Rovers Bowles yeah thank you um, Tim Hurtley which three Go players on, three have surpassed your expectations this season and how far do you think they will continue to perform or exceed expectation great question Tim Hurtley Todd Cantwell yeah. immediately number yeah. one yeah great for me number yeah. one second for me Ben Godfrey He's taken to the Premier League like a duck to water. Mm. He really has. A duck loves water. And the third for me is Jamal Lewis. Wow. Because, you know, he had most salary in his back pocket. Yeah. And that is some achievement. Yeah. What about for you? Good. For me, Todd at the top, I thought he was, I thought he was going to be a fringe player, as we said. Yeah. He's he's at the first name. On the, he's the second name on the team sheet. At the yeah. Moment. Oh, Pookie, by the way. Yeah. We've got a Pookie. Well, yeah. Pookie, so Pookie's my number two. Yeah, I, got I thought he was going to score goals in the Premier League, but not this but many. Not this many. He's going at nearly two a game, yeah. Chris. I'm pleased yeah. I put him in my fantasy wow. team, by the way. Yeah, and, and that, Cantwell. That's a stat. So Pookie was the most transferred player in in a game week of any fantasy week ever. How many people put him nearly in? Nearly three quarters of a million people. <laughs> How wow. mad is that? Wow. The Pookie and party he's a, is spreading. Yeah, I love that. And everyone's invited. Yeah, and let's turn the music up. Yeah. Let's turn it right up and let's vibe Let's the Pookie party. You know what? Let's dim the lights, let's put the music up, and let's get a couple of wood for I was a bit disappointed today that I start, I tried to start a no Pookie, no party, and yeah. no one joined in. It's a bit disappointed in that. Right. Everyone loves the team of Pookie Baby, but I love a no Pookie, no party, mm. because Tete's not in the team anymore. Yeah. I like that chant. Can we can we give that something at West Ham away? I will be there, and I expect people to join in with me. Matt Nixon has just uh, opened up a can of worms. Oh wow! Is it time to put the number two keeper in? Oh no! Way. You don't know what you've got yourself That's in for. That's shocking. Fella. You don't know what. That's you've got. shocking. I've been here before, Sam. Oh, Matt, no. Matt, this is not a battle you want to be picking. There oh, are a lot of very, no. very hardened Tim Krill fans out there. <laughs> And guess what? Angus Gibson is one of them. He's replied, no chance, Matt. Been nothing wrong with Krull's performances. Yeah. In fact, he's been excellent so far. Yeah. No need to bring in 
farming just yet. Do you love that though? Do you love hearing that? Someone else in your old camp. You know what? And I told you last week. You pitched the campsite. You've no. Well, no, 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 no. Let's let's get this right. You remember, you're you're not invited into the campsite no, no, still. But I'm still peeping over. You're, you're pitched up. You're peeping over. Yeah. And Tim is probably about to let you in. Yeah. If you keep going. And guess what? There's been a, there's been a, a, you very you very much complimented his performance today. Well, though, yeah. Jack. Guess what? There's been a progression. Yeah. I've sacked off the tent. I've bought a motorhome, and I'm ready to crash through the gates. Oh, I love that. I really love that from you. I'm there. I'm buying it. I'm saying, Pookie, where's the hookup spot for my motorhome, mate? I'm here and I want full gas. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. How the hell do we do you... get, get 10,000 views on videos? I have no idea. Here's a question. Go on. If you were to go camping yeah. with one Norwich City player, who would it be? Ooh, I love that. And you can't pick Tim Krull because he's, he's the king of the campsite. Uh, where are we in the world? Uh, North Norfolk. Oh, in which case that completely changes. We're, we're in um, we're in Beeston. Do you know Beeston Regis? Yeah, Beeston Regis. Beeston Bump, highest point in Norfolk, of course. Big up Beeston Regis, by the way. Can't tell you why, but big up Beeston Regis. Wow. Holiday Park. Oh, nice. Do they want to sponsor the question? Was, uh, yeah, maybe they do. Um, who would I bring camping with me? That's interesting. Ah, So you're in a tent as well? I've got it, I've got it, I've got Go it. On. Has to be Team Pookie. Really? If you saw the Talk Not A City post. Oh, I did see it. This week, you'll know he's an avid fisherman. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if it all goes peak tong, you can't go down to the holiday camp shop. No. And they've run out of bread. Timu Puki is the kind of guy that will, oh dear, I'm about to say this. Erect his rod and whip, chuck it in there. Whip his rod out, yeah. get it in the sea, yeah. and pull one out. Mm. Oh God, it sounds good. <laughs> oh God. It's issues surrounding this. We've overfished the sea, so there's no bloody fish left in there. But he oh, could go down to Tasbro, Tasbro Lake, and pull out a carp or something. Yeah, like that. God, it's good. No, nice from you. For Random me, Random fact for you. My, my first fish that I ever caught was a pike Okay. in the Lake District. Is that good? Barbecued it. Did you? It tasted awful. You can't eat pike, can you? Well, yeah, God, I might be I don't think in trouble there. Pike. No, I don't think you meant to, but I did. Here's a fact. I've never been fishing. No. I've been crabbing. I'm really good at crabbing. I think it's a different art, but I've never been fishing. Can we go fishing one day? Let us know your comments and thoughts and feelings on fishing. That could be another thing that you get. Um, that could be an, when we terminate Bristol Rovers Poll's contract at the end yes. of this podcast. That could be another thing that we could sell the sponsor for every single Q and A. A we, sponsor Q and A. You know, no, we could. They could come fishing with us. Love that. But they could whip their rods out. <laughs> uh, who would I? I'd go camping. I'd go camping with. Uh, go on. Go on. Go on. I don't know. I want someone who can put a tent up well. And I don't know who that is. Most intelligent player in the Norwich City team is Christoph Zimmerman. Hardened German. Yeah, actually. He's, that's a a good show, he's actually. erecting your tent yeah. as quick as you'd like. Yeah, and that's what I want. Uh, did you know that Frank Lampard nearly has a high, high IQ than... Um, what's his face? Um, did you know that Lampard Brazil? wrote a series of books? He's really clever. He's got an IQ of 150. I actually do. Uh, people take the piss out of him, but I don't think it's his fault. I think it's the Sky Sports hype. I actually have got time for Frank Lampard. Good. I think he's a decent chap, isn't he? Good. Oh, no, I, th I think you'd want to go for a pint with him. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. would. Good. Angus Gibson, Godfrey for England? Yes. Yes. You know what? I think that's an actual shout. Like, jeez. Oh, really? Well, yeah. What, when? When? Now? No. He gets it. He gets in the bench. Yeah. Buying that. I, I actually... Who are, who are England centre-backs? Like, Gary Cahill. It can't be Gary... Hang on. Who played we for us to, in the World Cup? Are we onto something here? Are we onto something Who played here? for us in the World Cup? I genuinely can't remember. Ma Trippier Ma got in this side. Maggie's us. at the back. Yeah, you see his mistake for the Palace mm. goal today. Maggie. <laughs> Jesus. Well, you call <laughs> Josip Dermic Big Jojo, so I'll call Harry Maguire Maggie if I want. Yeah. All right. Next. Call him that. Keep going. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the questions are the same here, Chris. Uh, Is it like abuse for Handley? Just they take Hanley out for closer and how okay. fucking good Todd Cantwell is. Love that. Keep that Todd Cantwell praise coming. That's what I say. Absolutely. West Ham. Oh, I've got another, got another oh. thing here. Another statement from Mark. Old school Marky. Good to see you, Mark. Mark. Uh, Hanley's performances also puts a lot of pressure on Max Ahrens. No panic, though. Zimbo back soon and yep. we'll be absolutely fine. Yep. Difficult to play out from the back when only one centre-back can play forwards. Yes, agreed. Agreed, Mark. 
Uh, look, love that, Grant. If if you, if you want to come on the podcast, we'll still welcome you. I think you're a lovely man. Um, Do you remember Grant Hanley's debut against Ipswich? No, I, you and he had those pink boots on. Yeah, and the first thing me and Jack instantly turned to each other and went pace. Yeah, just unbelievable. Yeah. His first ever outing in an Orange City shirt was an under twenty three game. I remember because Aston saved the penalty, and I've never seen someone get crunched so much as that Southampton under twenty three player. Grant Hanley had him absolutely didn't he? halved, and it <laughs> was a it was a clear foul. I'm just thinking, Grant, mate, he's, he's about a, he's about twelve. He's such a Brexit defender. He's not even isn't out he? of school yet. I kind Grant. of I kind of love Grant Hanley for that though. I love the fact that he's got an absolutely ginormous head. Yeah, never wins a header. Yeah, and, well, that's a bit harsh. He does, <laughs> but from corners, you're looking at that Grant Hanley head. He's a big head. You know what? I kind of hope he does start against West Ham and he scores the winner. Yeah, get in there, Grant. That's what I say. Hashtag get in there, Grant. Get in there, Grant. Uh, I think we're out of questions for the week. Yeah. Thanks for tweeting us all in. Uh, Crawley, Dennis from Benny Hattrick, Tuesday night. Dennis starts against Crawley, doesn't he? <laughs> Sorry, of course he does. Yeah. And he bangs in a hat-trick. Yeah. Right, someone click this up. Dennis from Benny will score a hat-trick against Crawley on Tuesday night. Are you going? No. No. Are you going? No, I'm not actually. <laughs> you know what the thing with Crawley is? Is he's actually quite close to London, but it takes ages to get there. Oh, you're such a glory hunter, man. I'm also moving flat that day. Mm, good excuse. Um, Decent excuse. Well, ish. Yeah, it's a it's a good excuse. It's up there in the top. I respect excuses. everyone that's going there, of course, as Definitely. always. Weird how it didn't go uh, straight away though. The tickets didn't sell straight away. Did oh, they? don't don't start <laughs> that. Don't. There start goes that. there goes the fishing line. Um, and of course, non-members could get tickets. So. Yes, good. Uh, what are you doing this week? Uh, what am I doing this week? Oh, actually, I'm about to say something. Right. So, if you've got to this point in the podcast, you've already got an advantage. It's so. This isn't just. This is, believe me, this is important. On Twitter, on Instagram, and if you can do it on Facebook, turn on your notifications for the Talk Nora City social media accounts because turn us on, baby. We. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. We are about to launch another competition. We are giving away so and, much stuff. And, and let me tell you, honestly, hand on heart, this is the coolest competition yeah. we've ever done. Me and Jack are both currently looking at the prize. Wow. Is. And... Dennis, sit down, mate. <laughs> and let me tell you, this is worth entering. It's going to be on Twitter. It's going to be on Insta. It's going to be well. on Facebook. This is... You can't buy this. No. You cannot buy this. And you can win it for free. And all you've got to do is comply with the competition terms on social media. So By the way, we involved. are giving... A, we've done like a comp every week for the past month. Well, that's what we do, half. Jack. We're like postmen. We're givers. We always deliver. Mm. First class. We're givers, not receivers. Uh, although we did receive them off of... Um, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. Lots of innuendos today. No, no, take it how you want. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good to see. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, please subscribe. We're nearly at seventeen thousand subscribers. We yes. might have already hit it. I don't know. Yes. I've looked for a little while. Thanks for all the love on the Dennis for Betty launch video. <laughs> massively appreciate it, Max. I just want to say a massive thanks to our videographer yeah. and editor, Max, who is a superstar, and Emma Piper, Emma Piper. who is we an extremely talented designer. Yeah. Thanks, guys, and thanks for all your support. Yeah, thanks very much. We'll see you next week for another TNC podcast. We're against West Ham. Yeah, we Will are. Will I see you there? I'll be there. Well, I'm not. <laughs> you won't see me there. <laughs> me and Big Papa Rafa Reeve will be there. Yeah, Rafa's back in the game. Rafa's back in the back game. Back from China. Back in the game. Good to see you. See you later. <laughs>